welcome to the Soap Video series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We are working through our uh, new card that just started with the book of 2 Timothy, Ooh. and it's a short book. Yeah, very short. Sure. Four chapters, and we're going to take two weeks, and this is our second week. So, yeah, exactly. Let's finish up the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Right. So, the big deal is, you know, where are we at? type of deal. And we know that Paul was under arrest and in Rome, and this actually happened twice. Uh, and the first time he wrote Philippians, which was really a book uh, that has a bunch of joy in it and joyful and about perseverance. Mm -hmm. uh, this book was only written a couple years later, but it's completely different. Yeah. And there's a finality to it. Yeah. And, and it's uh, Paul knows he's not going to make it out this time. Uh, and I think we actually read that this week or yeah. where he says that. And he is writing to his friend, to uh, the person that he's mentored for years, a co-worker by, by the name of Timothy. And he knows Timothy well enough that he also knows his mother and grandmother. Yeah. So there's a there's a whole thing there. Yeah. And he starts out the book by calling him my dear child. Yeah. So there's a there's a love there that's that's kind of amazing. And it's it's kind of impressive. We always think about last words. You know, what was the last word somebody said? These are the last words that we have from Paul. Yeah. So they're they're important. You know, everything in the Bible is important, but they're important from that aspect too. Yeah. You know, we have thirteen letters from Paul. And it's amazing to think about how many of them were written when he was locked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, even that is, should an apostle have an arrest record? <laughs> See, I've never seem, thought about doesn't it. Doesn't that, that seem a little odd? <laughs> and it's quite a lengthy one, too, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, we, uh, you know, it's no surprise. You know, we're, we're recording this uh, after the, the COVID pandemic is, you know, the lockdowns, most of the lockdowns are, are you know, released and everything. Right. But Paul, when he was under house arrest for two years, we have at least four letters from him. Now he's in prison. We have at least <laughs> one more. You know, what, and, what did we do during COVID? Yeah, Is that where you're going with that? Yeah. Just, just using. I, I think there's an overall principle in, in Ephesians, which was written about the same time as Philippians. He says redeeming the time. Yeah. You know, and so there's this. You know, how? You know, okay, for, fine. Maybe we're not sitting in prison. But how are we redeeming the time that we have? What are we accomplishing? What are we doing? Here he was... Well, no, I feel bad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. Here he was uh, not just under house arrest, but actually in prison facing execution. It was during Nero's persecution of the yeah, Christians. The, the times, Jews, right? Society has just, changed. You right. know, and um, he writes a letter, right? You know, for us, you know, we're sending an email or a text or something, same concept, but... You know, he, he says, this is important. I want to share some last words. Yeah. And that was the way he had to do it. Right. And so we have what we call Second Timothy, four chapters. For him, it was a letter, yeah. like you said, a Here, letter to Here's friend. what I think is important. Yeah. 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 And, and last week, he brings out false teachers. Yeah. And it's amazing how much, uh, if you've been following along in these series, how much false teachers come out time yeah. after time after time, and how quick they came out. Well, we're only we're, we're less than ten years uh, since the church in Ephesus got started. Okay, Paul had spent three years there teaching. I think last week I mentioned sort of like the first Christian seminary is what he created there in Ephesus. Right. It says that they rented a lecture hall so that they could listen to him teach, right? And and he left Timothy there to get the church established and in first timothy we see you know elders and deacons and how to right. get all of the, the structure of the local church and here we are several years later and it seems to me that timothy's ready to give up there's so much uh, uh f there's false teaching that he can't get a handle on paul's not there to stop it now he's arrested again timothy is sort of a timid yeah, weak way, guy anyway right. and this whole letter is just, man, don't give up. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're facing, but here is what you need. And I'm leaving. Right. And I'm leaving it in your capable hands. Right. But it's only in your capable hands through Christ. Right. Right. And you've already learned it. You have the knowledge. Apply it. Yeah. Use it. And we see that in chapter three. Yep. Continue in the things you have learned. Yeah. Heard from me. Heard from, you know, just keep... Keep going with what you know. Right. 
We're, we're not here to don't have to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. Don't need new methods. Don't need all this other stuff. Keep plugging away in what you know is true and let God take care of the details. Right. Right. So we ended last week again on false teachers. There were two teachers um, in that church mm-hmm. uh, that at least. Yeah, that were um, that were specifically called out. Yep. And Paul's telling Timothy, you got to deal with them. Yep. You know, you got to get them out. And then, well, that wouldn't go over well today, would it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> calling people by name in the church. Yeah. You're a false teacher. No, you don't get to stand up and talk. Yeah, can you imagine reading that letter? <laughs> like, like when when you get the letter in, you know, does somebody first read it and and figure it out, or is it we just got a letter? I'm breaking the seal. The whole church is there, and you're reading it. Like, <laughs> uh, and let's see. Paul mentioned a couple of you uh, by name here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, so this week we start with, um, uh, what is this? It's not a parable. Uh, yeah, just an illustri- another illustration. Yeah, an illustration, but it goes back to the false teachers. Yeah. And he's talking uh, about a wealthy home, and in a wealthy home you have a bunch of different vessels, and some are gold, some are silver, and he names a couple different things. And, he, and what it comes down to, though, they're useful. But there are certainly other vessels that aren't useful. Yeah. And he uses clean and unclean in there. Yeah. Uh, but vessels can be clean and made useful again. Mm-hmm. And then he brings that around to us, you know, that where us as Christians, we can be either useful or we can be unuseful. And uh, then, I don't know that it's, it's, it's not surprising. I thought Paul would take a, a harder stance. Uh, but he says, you know, hey, if you're unuseful, you can be clean and be useful again, yeah. you know, which is a great a great stance to take. And it's and it's very reflexive. It's not just okay, sit there and somebody else is going to make me useful or unuseful. It's you got to do it to yourself, right? You got to do it to yourself. Are you going to be you know clean? Are you going to be useful? Or are you just going to sit there on the shelf, right? You know, getting the game, right? So I kind of see it as in the pre last week of, at the end. Um, you know, he kind of spanked two people, mm-hmm. and now this is the restoration. Yeah. Hey, you have a choice. You can, you know, you can come back and work your way back, but there's a cleanliness that you have to apply to yourself. Yeah, and let's be let's let's make sure that we're clear. We're not talking about salvation. It's not right. you know we're in danger of losing salvation and working our way back, but uh, repentance, restoration, maturity, ministry, the discipleship, the path. Yep. So is what yep. we're talking about, not salvation. Yeah, and then he, he ends this section with, you know, perhaps God will grant them repentance and knowledge of the truth. Yeah. And, and I really like that part, you know, with the path and, and the knowledge, because it keeps coming up um, again and again. Yeah. And, and it does go right back to the path. And, and somebody may ask about this. What, what, is, what do you mean that perhaps God may grant them repentance and knowledge of the truth? Well, when we see throughout the New Testament that a person can go so far away from God that he says, all right, you're done. I'm cutting you off. No more chance for maturity. No more chance for repentance. We see that in Hebrews 6. No more chance. And it could actually end up in physical death. And again, they're still saved, but they've lost all opportunity because they've gone so far and so hard away from God intentionally. And so what he what he's saying here is that, you know, Maybe they're not done, so we keep working, we keep trying, yeah. we keep prodding, and maybe they're not too far away yet. Right, and it's a great thing for the church. Yeah, uh, you know, for us today. Yeah, you know, how many chances do you give? You know, enough. Yeah, yep, type of deal. Yeah, we're not the ones who call somebody done. Right? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Uh, so then we get into chapter three, and, and Paul is saying that difficult days are going to come, and he gives he gives a complete list, or not complete list, but he gives a list of things to look for. Yep. And as I'm reading these lists, of course, I'm applying them to today. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that's uh, that's what I do. And uh, I guess my question is, um, in Paul's day, it seemed like that list was true, and in our day, it seems like that list is true. So, hasn't this list always been true? Um, I think it is in in the uh, the unsaved world. There's definitely no doubt that I mean that's I mean this is very similar to uh, the list in Romans one where he's talking about you know the pagan right. world, the uncivilized, you know the the unsaved world. But here he's talking about the church. Okay. So what the world has always looked like, what the world has always been characterized by in the last days, the church also will look like and be characterized by, and you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Okay. And that's, I think, where we're seeing it more today. 
than even he was seeing it in his time. Yeah, and I think verse 5 really hits that. Yeah. They will retain an outward appearance of religion. Yeah. So, so talking about the church and, you know, uh, retaining the appearance. but The appearance there. of religion, the appearance of godliness, but, but without yeah. the power. Yeah, because you're right in the secular world. There's no appearance of religion. <laughs> yeah, why, why do we need an appearance of religion? So he really is talking about the church. And if you go down through the next couple of verses, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, you, you have people who are looking for truth, and it's, he comes back to the false teachers who are seducing believers, and especially women. This is, an, this is a big deal. He says women are more easily seduced and deceived, which goes right back to First Timothy where he was deceived and Adam was not. He's still tying all that together. Yeah, first Gen- Genesis 1. Right? Yeah, well, Genesis 3, yeah, Genesis sorry. 3, but then yeah. he references it in uh, oh, 1 Timothy okay. 2. Um, and uh, he uh, th- he says that these women are always seeking instruction, which is great. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that because they're so hungry, so open to whoever's going to teach them, they're going to hear stuff and believe it because these guys are in the church. These right. false teachers are in the church. Right. Why wouldn't they believe it? Right. So it's a good, uh, you know, reminder for yeah. us, of course, too, that right. um, we always need to not necessarily test our leaders, but understand what they're saying and have enough knowledge of the Bible to understand yeah. um, if they're right or wrong. If we're completely reliant, and we're saying this as pastors, if we're yeah. completely reliant on our church leaders to tell us what's right and wrong, or, you know, academics or scholars or whatever, and we never double check, we never, you know, and you're we're in asking trouble. Questions. Yeah, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the whole church is in trouble. Fun fact, this is the only place that um, the, the, the magicians in Pharaoh's court back in Exodus who stood up against Moses, this is the only place in the Bible they're, they're named. So, so you go back to Exodus, and you're like, who's Janice and Jambres? You know, who, are, who are these guys? Right. Well, apparently they're magicians who stood against Moses, and their names were preserved in like extra biblical uh, tradition or whatever. Right. And Paul, Paul pulls them out. Paul pulls them out, but you're never going to see those names anywhere else in Scripture. Nice. So, um, on that same thing, on that same thing about the false teachers and and the, um, you know, seducing people in the church, right? You know, trying to. Mm-hmm. In fact, he says to take them captive. Um, In verse 13, he says, Evil people and charlatans will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived themselves. And if they're going to get worse and worse, that means those of us who hold strong, healthy doctrine, we need to make sure that we're getting better and better, right? right? Stronger and stronger, because we're fighting this. You know, if we just sit back and just do our thing, we're going to lose, we're losing ground, right? right? That's a great point. Even one verse before that, in verse 12, it says all Christians will be persecuted. At some and level. That's the, yeah. And that's the play there, yeah. right? So we need to have a strong foundation. So uh, if we're always around Christians, you know, always around believers, everybody always believes the same thing. Um, it's not really an iron sharpens iron kind of deal. It's yeah. we get soft. Yeah. Uh, and then when somebody comes in with a different idea... We don't have the foundation to say, is that right? Is that wrong? Yeah. Or this is wrong because. Yeah. I mean, we have a, a, a system that we teach. We have yeah. a doctrine that we believe, you know, whatever. But if it's just a, a, if our church is just full, of any any church, not just ours, but if any church is just full of yes men, right? Right. You know, whatever he says must be true. There's yep. there's yep. Uh, some problem yep. there. Yep. So, so Paul says how to combat that. And he says, continue with what you've been taught. Yep. Uh, big emphasis on knowledge, like like we talked about yeah. before. Yep. From infancy, you've known the holy writings, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation. And then we get into verses sixteen and seventeen. Yep. And I think <laughs> you're going to bring. I think I said this last time, where most of the the most of the well known stuff in Second Timothy is sort of in this second yeah. week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Every scripture is inspired by God, right? Right. And it is profitable. What the Old Testament is profitable? Well. Most of what Timothy had was the Old Testament, right? right? You know, and I love and, and I've said this many, many times over the years, um, and I don't remember where I heard it. I can't give credit for it. But when he says doctrine, reproof, correction and training in righteousness, a long time ago, I heard somebody say doctrine is what is right. Reproof is, is it tells us what is wrong. Correction is tells us how to get right. 
and training is how to tells us how to stay right. Nice. What is right? What is wrong? How to get right? How to stay right? Nice. So that we can be equipped for every good work. Right. And and it's back to be ready. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good. The path is all over the place in here. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Sometimes I, I do feel that I, I I see it in too many places, but. It is right. <laughs> you know, you, you know, we don't want to read into it, yeah. but <laughs> right. okay. So then, in chapter four, Paul recaps what he wants from Timothy. Yeah, you know, he, he's he's he is really starting to end the slaughter. Um, okay, what's important? And it's preach the message. Yeah, that's his that's his number one thing. Yeah, be ready, be ready to reprove. And I love it. Be ready to reprove, rebuke, exhort, and it's like. And then he says, with patience yeah. and instruction. Yeah. And I, I think that's an amazing, amazing thing. But somebody who is old, somebody who's facing end of life, uh, would, would be with patience. You know, yeah. I was expecting fire and brimstone here and, and got with patience and instruction. Yeah. But that's the deal, right? Well, and part of it, don't forget, Timothy's tempted to give up. So this preach the word, whether it's convenient or not, in season, out of season, do the work of an evangelist. He's really just calling him back to his job. This is why I placed you here. Don't forget your job description. Don't forget what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And it does take patience and it will take time. You know, because verse three, and we see this again today. There will be a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. Instead, following their own desires, they'll accumulate teachers for themselves because they have an insatiable curiosity to hear new things. Uh, the King James, uh, Older English Bibles, King James, ASV, some of these other ones, use the phrase, they have itching ears, constantly <laughs> listening for new things. You know, People won't tolerate sound teaching. Right. There was uh, one of the cities was like that, right? Always looking for new things. Paul. Yeah, uh, I don't remember, but Paul Paul yelled at him for uh, Corinth. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, in in starting in verse six, this is where we get um, that Paul believes he's at the end because yep. he says, "I'm being poured out as an offering, and the time for me to depart is at hand." Mm -hmm. So, so pretty obvious there. And then he goes into a, a sports a sports thing. I've competed well. I've finished the race, and I've kept the faith. Yep. And a crown of righteousness is reserved for me. Yep, it's a beautiful symbolism there, and somebody acknowledging that, um, you know, I'm at the end. I, you know, I couldn't have run faster. I couldn't have tried more day yep. in and day out. Yep. Um, so, what's it going to take for us to say this? Well, the same thing <laughs> that Paul did in, in 1 Corinthians 9. He said that I I keep my body under subjection. I actually have to sometimes beat my body into subjection mm -hmm. so that after I have done all my ministry, I don't end up being disqualified from ministry. You know, I know I'm preaching the right thing, but am I also doing, am I, am I walking the talk, am I walking the walk, basically? Right. And here he comes down to the end of his life and he says, I think I did it. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. It. And even uh, you know, in other places he acknowledges, look, I'm not perfect. Yeah. You know, no way. Sure. So there's certain, you know, acknowledge the errors, but he was also looking forward. Yep. Uh, and it's awesome. really cool. This is one of those places where there are not many places where the rewards, the the heavenly rewards are actually listed or anything. It's like, what are we going to be rewarded for? Well, it's sort of nebulous. But this one, he says, there is a crown of righteousness. There is some kind of righteous reward. Yeah. Not just for him, he says, but also for everyone who love or anticipate and prepare for his coming. So how, one, how, how do we do this? <laughs> We're looking forward to the rapture, looking forward to his coming, and living in light of the fact that that could happen anytime. Yeah, exactly. Great. Great. Uh, then he, you know, Paul's in prison. He can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So he asks uh, Timothy to come, and he mm -hmm. says, hey, while you're at it, bring Luke, bring Mark, which is kind of cool, right? Some pretty powerful people, uh, biblical people, you know, yeah. Mark and Luke, uh, you know, that are still there. Hey, by the way, Paul wants us. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then he says, uh, bring my cloak and bring the scrolls. Yeah, I uh, love that. And that's, a, yeah, that's an awesome thing, isn't it? 
I love that. He's like, I don't have my bookcase with me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Could I have a couple of books yeah. to keep me, you know. And what are the parchments? Probably yeah. Old Testament scriptures. Right, but um, they knew each other well enough that he didn't have to say. He didn't have know, to say which ones. ones. <laughs> yeah, which is <laughs> that's cool. right. That's right. Okay, now we got a guy in here that's that's mentioned. Uh, a guy by the name of Alexander the Coppersmith. Yep. He did Paul a great deal of harm. Mm-hmm. But that's it. <laughs> that's, that's all we know. That's right. All, yeah. So what happened? I, we don't know. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if this would tie back to um, um, Ephesus. Uh, when Paul was in Ephesus, uh, he did a lot of preaching, and they and uh, basically said, you know, idols are bad. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And there was a huge riot. Yep. And and and, and the. The workers of the town, the silversmiths, and the people who were making the idols, yeah. they were man. They yeah. were they wanted to yep. to kill Paul because he was hurting them financially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he cast a demon out of a out of, out of a girl who was making a lot of money for these people. You know all yeah. of that. Um, I guess that was Philippi. Uh, the um, but it did specifically mention silversmiths. Right, and this, and is, this is a copper smith. You would think that they're probably doing business together or whatever. Um, I, I I don't think we know. Okay. Um, but again, it's a personal letter to Timothy. Timothy would have known. Timothy would have known because in the next verse he says, you be on guard against him too because he vehemently opposed our words. So he was doing, I mean, he was an activist against Paul and, and right. Timothy and their be. ministry. Right. So, and apparently he had some clout. So yeah, be right. careful. Yeah. Of, yeah, and he's not saying take revenge. No, in fact, he him. says God will take revenge on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God will take care of it. You just keep an eye out. You be careful in your interactions with Him, and you let God take care of the of the repayment. Right. Uh, then at the very end, uh, there's there's a greetings from a number of people. So are these people that had visited Paul, and and Paul is. Um, um, telling Timothy they said hi. Yeah, uh, could be some people in Rome with the, whom uh, um, uh, Timothy, Timothy knew. knew. Yeah, because he'd been around. Yeah, so these people, uh, um, uh, assuming that they had, they were visiting Paul on at least some frequency. Yeah. Yep. So he's not totally alone. Yep. And Lots then, of names. Lots yeah. of names in here. Some people who. I, I love this list of names because some people Paul had said, had said, you know, I sent him off here to do ministry. I sent him off yeah. here. He's still man. He's still sort of managing his right. organization, and right. he's letting Timothy know where everybody is. Right. Right. Who's going to pick up? You know, Paul. You know, the organization. Yeah. Right. Some people deserted him. Some people are like, nope, I don't want to have. I'm not. I'm not going down with you. You know. Right. Right. Well, and again, uh, persecution was. Becoming more and more yeah. real. Yeah. Wow. Yep. All right, so how do we end here? Well, I think it's just a good reminder of, of a couple of things in today's church. There's the potential for false teaching. We combat that with sound teaching. And then um, we're looking forward to Jesus' return. We don't know when it will be. You know, right. it could be any time. Right. And so... We need to, I think the encouragement to Timothy is the same one to us. doesn't matter how hard things get. It doesn't matter how, how nasty people get against the church, against sound teaching. It doesn't matter if it looks like people are deserting. We keep plugging on. We keep doing what we know we're supposed to be doing as a church, as individuals, and let God take care of the details. Yeah. Stay on Great. the path. Great. Great. Great way to end. That's, that's how yeah. Second Timothy is. Yeah. So... We hope that's beneficial. We hope that's encouraging. Whatever it is that you're going through, keep plugging away, knowing that God knows the details and that he will sort things out in the end, even if it doesn't look like it right now. So um, uh, share this with somebody else, and we will be back next time. Follow along on uh, your little orange card. We'll be back time next time with a brand new book, and we'll see you then. Bye.